Let's uh, bring in uh, Jamil Jaffer, founder and executive director of the National Security Institute at George Mason University Scalia Law School. He's the former counsel to the assistant attorney general for national security. Good to see you again. Thanks for being here. So from a national security perspective, is it a big deal if Congress doesn't reauthorize FISA, this part of it? I mean, it couldn't be more disastrous. Section 702 provides upwards of 50 percent of the information in the president's daily brief every day. That's the highest uh, priority intelligence product the president reads. Uh, so without that collection, we are essentially uh, a deaf uh, when it comes to signals intelligence uh, without 702. Now, I, I, I believe it was uh, this provision that allowed the NSA, I think it was the NSA, that was reading an email from bin Laden's bomb maker and realized that he was talking to somebody in Colorado, and that's the whole Zazi affair. They were supposed to, they were going to, conspiring to blow up the subways in New York. So it has been used correctly. Well, there's no doubt that Section 702 provides some of the most important intelligence, including on terrorists and foreign intelligence targets. Um, and, and some of the cases involve uh, disrupting terrorist plots here in the United States, identifying spies. We've identified threats overseas as well. So this could not be a more critical intelligence program. And by the way, uh, President Trump, his administration, um, and the White House supported the last reauthorization even after uh, the challenges with FISA were revealed. And by the way, it's worth noting, None of the authorities we're talking about today, which are about, as John pointed out, about the surveillance of foreigners located overseas, have anything to do with any surveillance of Americans in the United States at all. Unless they're talking to somebody overseas that, they're, that is being surveilled. Exactly right. So what is Trump's issue about FISA? There were FISA abuses that went on went during Crossfire Hurricane, the operation that was looking into whether or not his campaign had ties to Russia. And, and by the way... There was outreach by Russians to the Trump campaign. That's just a factual matter. That's right. Well, one of the challenges we hear about this Carter Page matter, right? Carter Page was a was a Trump campaign associate. Um, he was surveilled under Title One of FISA, not Section 702. They went to a judge and got a court order to to uh, to surveil him. The problem there was was that in the reauthorization for that court order, uh, one of the lawyers, frankly, changed the information and was inaccurate and, and probably lied about what they understood whether he was working for the U.S. government. That resulted in the judge reauthorizing it. That lawyer, by the way, fired and prosecuted by the Justice Department for that, for that problem. So, you know, President Trump is wrong about, uh, about whether this was used to surveil his campaign. It wasn't. Um, and his, in fact, to the contrary, his administration, every major official, Mike Pompeo, Robert O'Brien, uh, DNI John Ratcliffe, all support the reauthorizations, as do the 9-11 families. So uh, today in a phone interview with CNN, Trump's former Attorney General Bill Barr uh, he's on your side on this. He, yep. he agrees that it should be re reauthorized. Um, and he said, as you just did, that the provisions that were set to be reauthorized today had nothing to do with what happened to Trump. So he, he, in his view, Trump's just barking up the wrong tree here. He, his, he has reason to, be, to object to what happened with the Carter Page situation. I don't think anybody disagrees with that because right. the guy's been prosecuted. Um, but it has nothing to do with this. That's exactly right. And in fact, something like this actually happened during the Trump administration, where his, where his administration was seeking reauthorization on the day of the vote. President Trump got bad advice from, from some friend or somebody he was talking to. He tweeted out. The administration immediately walked back that tweet. Now he's back at it again. It's worth noting, by the way, in addition to the 19 Republicans that oppose going to the rule on this, 209 Democrats as well. So we're really playing with fire here. Um, if this thing expires in a week from now, we're going to be essentially deaf to the critical in signals intelligence that supports our national security at a time there's a war in Ukraine, a war with, between Israel and Hamas. The Chinese are looking at us stealing our information. This is the worst possible time for us to be going deaf. It would be a disaster for the country. Republicans, Democrats need to get together, find a path forward, and vote. And by the way, the Speaker was ready to have an up or down vote on this warrant question. A warrant, by the way, would be terrible for our national security. But he was willing to offer an up or down vote. So it's not clear why, other than what Donald Trump tweeted, why Republicans are opposed to having a fair vote on this bill. Well, and you talk about that because some libertarians say Section 702 violates, uh, violates the Fourth Amendment. Courts have uh, ruled that questioning Americans found in the existing FISA database is not a separate search and does not require a warrant. Um, but as you note, uh, Johnson's made this, Johnson made this offer if you want to change it so that it's not warrantless, like you have to get a warrant. Why do you think that's a bad idea? Well, so a couple of things. One, what we know is that we have this data that's collected from targeting foreigners located overseas. Saying to the FBI or the U.S. government, hey, you got to lock that information in a drawer and not look at it, even when you know an American is talking to a terrorist 
or a foreign intelligence officer, that's exactly the worst time for us to have the drawer locked, have to go to a federal judge to get a key to open that drawer, right? And by the way, if we want to collect on an American, you have to actually have to get a court order anyway. So all we're going to have is that one communication between an American and a foreigner. We can decide, do we want to go to a court and get more surveillance on that American, right? But the idea that we should lock it away, knowing there's information there for us to look at, right when we might be in the heart of a, of a, of a terrorist plot or the like, that's crazy. We learned this lesson after 9-11. Don't create walls in the surveillance you've already lawfully collected. Doing a war requirement now would be to create that wall. But look, let's have a vote. Let's have let's, let's see what happens. And if people who support a warrant get their warrant, then they can be held responsible when if something goes wrong. Jamil Jaffer, thank you so much. Always good to have you.